Today's parable is called The Rich Fool. Those two words don't seem to uh, go together, do they? The rich fool. Can a rich man be foolish? Can a foolish man be rich? Yet this is one of uh, Jesus' most explosive stories or parables. He added some punch to this by saying, Take care to guard against all greed, for one's life does not consist of possessions. One's life does not consist of possessions. And that's really the gospel in a nutshell. So Jesus tells the story of a rich man who plans for a prosperous future, thinking about himself, if you noticed, the word I comes frequently. This is what I will do. This is how I will enjoy life. He plans for a prosperous future by eating and drinking and being merry. And to do this, he plans to build a bigger barn. He's not satisfied with the one barn because it doesn't hold everything he has. The rich fool reminds me of a few quotes that we've all heard in time. One of them is, you can't take it with you. You can't take it with you. Another is, do you own your stuff? Or does your stuff own you? And Mark Twain made this comment. There is no sense being the richest man in the cemetery. There's a very uh, provocative book entitled Affluenza the all-consuming epidemic. And it's about a disease that we have in our country that does deadly damage to health and families, to communities, the environment. It's the obsessive quest for more, for material gain. When we ignore Jesus' warning that one's life does not consist of possessions, we become infected by affluenza. That was the rich fool's downfall. Here are some of the symptoms of this American disease. Our annual production of solid waste could fill a convoy of garbage trucks that stretches to the moon. Now, that's a long way. We just celebrated the 50th anniversary of going to the moon and walking on the moon. It's 239,000 miles away. Another We have twice as many shopping centers as high schools. We make up in America only 5% of the Earth's people, but we account for 25% of the global warming gas emissions. Americans spend nearly seven times as much time shopping as they do playing with their kids. 
Here's another one. There are 30,000 self-storage facilities in the USA. It's a $32 billion business just storing things in those barns. We have the pursuit of stuff. We want more. Jesus warned us about this in today's parable. The best things in life are not things. Don't become a victim of affluenza. Jesus is saying that those who store up treasure for themselves are not rich in what matters to God. And what matters to God? What is most valuable is not what we have in our lives, but who, who we have in our lives. That's where the real value of living is. Jesus never condemned the wealthy for having wealth. They've used their talents, their gifts to work. He condemned them for letting their wealth make them forget about God's blessings. One way to put this into practice of not letting stuff take over in our lives is to look at your space. Take a look at your barns where you store your harvest, your possessions. Take a quick inventory. Check your attic, your garage, your basement, your storage space. You can kind of go through that in your mind. When you unpack your vacation bags, it might be good to pack a box or two or three of things you've accumulated over the years, the unneeded stuff that is getting dusty and old, and take those boxes to St. Vincent de Paul, to the Goodwill store, to the Salvation Army. Then when you have done that, just think you'll have a lot of empty space. And then you can go out and fill those spaces back up and you'll help the economy to grow as you do that. But you're just not storing those things in boxes and putting them away. A child once said that the reason we can't take our possessions into heaven is that to get to heaven we have to be weightless and that if we have stuff in our pockets, lots of stuff, we will be too heavy to float to heaven. Ironically then the way to store up things in heaven is to give things away on earth. It's not easy. It can be humbling to go through those possessions that are just stored. We need a certain amount of material goods and money to live a decent life, a good life, to enjoy the fruits of our labor, to provide for the future, yes. The question is, when does a legitimate desire to meet one's needs go beyond reasonable limits? Greed can show its ugly head in a few ways. First, I think greed keeps us from knowing ourselves well, from self-knowledge. We begin to believe that the accumulation of possessions is who and what I am. I am identified with the things I have. Faith tells us that we are always more than what we have. We are a son, a daughter of the Lord. And second, greed keeps us from making connections. It displaces the only thing that really matters. 
We end up building relationships with material objects instead of people. When we run after things, we run right by the person or the people who count the most in our life. So remember the farmer in this story, this parable, the rich fool. All he had to do was to share with his neighbors. He could have used his neighbor's barns to store his excess grain. He could have opened up his own barns even after he built a bigger one. He could have lived comfortably with those who had little by sharing the success of his wealth, of his hard work. Instead, he only thought about himself, his wealth, and comfort. Let's learn from the rich fool this parable. One's life does not consist of possessions.